what's uh, through all your explorations of quantum computing, what's the coolest, most beautiful idea that you've come across that has been solved or has not yet been solved? I think the journey to understand something called ADS CFT. So the journey to understand quantum gravity through this picture where a hologram of lesser dimension is actually dual or exactly corresponding to a bulk uh, theory of quantum gravity of an extra dimension. And the fact that this sort of duality comes from trying to learn deep learning like representations of the boundary. Mm -hmm. And so at least part of my journey someday uh, on my bucket list is to apply quantum machine learning to uh, these sorts of systems, these CFTs or uh, they're called SYK models um, and learn an emergent geometry from, from the boundary theory. And so we can have a form of machine learning helps us to help us understand quantum gravity, right? Which is, you know, still a holy grail that I would like to hit before I leave this earth. <laughs> um, what, what do you think is going on with black holes? As information storing and processing units, what do you think is going on with black holes? Black holes are really fascinating objects. They're at the inter interface between quantum mechanics and gravity, and so they help us test all sorts of ideas. Um, I think that you know, for many decades now, there's been sort of this black hole information paradox that things that fall into the black hole seem to, we've seemed to have lost their information. Now I think there's this uh, firewall paradox that has been allegedly resolved in recent years by, um, you know, a former peer of mine, uh, who's now a professor at Berkeley. Um, and uh, there, it seems like there is, as information falls into a black hole, it's sort of, there's sort of a sedimentation, right? As you, as you get closer and closer to the horizon from the point of view, the observer on the outside, the object slows down infinitely as it gets closer and closer. And so everything that is falling to a black hole from our perspective gets sort of sedimented and tacked on to the near horizon. And at some point it gets so close to the horizon, it's in the proximity or the scale which in which quantum effects and quantum fluctuations matter. And there some that in falling matter could interfere with sort of the traditional pictures that it could interfere with the creation and annihilation of particles and antiparticles in the vacuum. And through this interference, uh, one of the particles gets entangled with the infalling information and one of them is now free and escapes. And that's how there's sort of mutual information between the outgoing radiation and the infalling matter. Uh, but getting that calculation right, I think we're only just starting to uh, put the pieces together. Um, There's a few pothead like questions I want to ask you. <laughs> sure. So one, does it terrify you that there's a giant black hole at the center of our galaxy? I don't know. I, I, I just want to, you know, set up shop near it to, to fast forward, you know, meet, uh, meet a future civilization, right? Like if we have a limited lifetime, if you can go orbit a black hole and emerge, uh, so if you were like, if there's a special mission that could take you to a black hole, would you volunteer to go travel? To orbit, uh, not, to obviously orbit. not fall into it. <laughs> that's, that's obvious. So it's obvious to you that everything's destroyed inside a black hole. Like all the information that makes up Guillaume is destroyed. Um, Maybe on the other side, Buff Jazel's emergence. <laughs> and, and it's all like it's tied together in some deeply meme way. Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. I, we, we have to answer what black holes are are they are we punching a hole through space time and creating a pocket universe it's possible right then then that would mean that if we ascend the kardashev scale to you know beyond kardashev type 3 we could engineer black holes with specific hyperparameters to transmit information to new universes we create and so we can have progeny right uh, that are new universes and so we even though our universe may 
reach a heat death, we may have a way to have a legacy, right? And so we don't know yet. We need to ascend the Kardashev scale to answer these questions, right? To peer into that regime of higher energy physics. And maybe you can uh, speak to the Kardashev scale for people who don't know. So one, one of the uh, sort of meme-like principles and goals of uh, the EAC movement is to ascend the Kardashev scale. What is the Ka Kardashev scale? And when do we want to ascend it? The Kardashev scale is a measure of our energy production and consumption. Um, and really it's a logarithmic scale. And Kardashev type one is a milestone where we are producing the equivalent wattage to all the energy that is incident on earth from the sun. Kardashev type two would be harnessing all the energy that is output by the sun. And I think type three is like the whole galaxy equivalent. Galaxy, I think level, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then some people have some crazy type four and five, but I, I don't know if I believe in those. But um, to me, it seems like from the first principles of thermodynamics that, again, this, there's this concept of thermodynamic uh, driven dissipative adaptation where, you know, life evolved on earth because we have this sort of energetic drive from the sun, right? We have incident energy and life evolved on earth to capture, figure out ways to best capture that free energy to maintain itself and, and grow. And I think that that principle, it's not special to our earth sun system. We can extend life well beyond and we kind of have a responsibility to do so because that's the process that brought us here. So we don't even know what it has in store for us in the future. It could be something of beauty we can't even imagine today, right? 